know. morning everybody good morning to those who are out there on the cyber land who might be watching it's good to be back in church praise the Lord give the Lord a hand clap we only took one Sunday off so it wasn't too bad but it's good to be here today thank the Lord I'd like to ask my wife Rose if she'd open us with a word of prayer Rose <coughs> Father, we thank you and praise you, Lord, for being here today, Lord, and we ask that uh, you be in our worship time, Lord, and uh, help us to worship you this morning, Lord. We're so thankful to be able to be back in church today, Lord, and yes, we ask you be uh, just in a message today, Lord, and uh, anoint a message and just ask you meet the needs here today, Lord. We'll give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. She had a birthday yesterday. <laughs> I won't tell you how old she is. I'll just say she's two years older than me, that's all. That so Maybe one and a half. One year. <laughs> one year. One year. <laughs> Thank you. We have come, come into, into this house, house together in his name. name.
have a broken spirit this morning. Maybe you've been wounded. Maybe something someone said. Maybe some, some, something somebody did to you. Father, we bring it to the altar this morning. And we say, we pray. Oh, my Savior, Savior. Thank you. 
you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Never stop. Listen, when I'm all alone, you're working. When I'm in my sick bed, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. When I got fear, you never stop working. When I've been betrayed, you never stop working. Show your face. We believe that you're in complete control, oh God. Raise up a chosen generation. Set us free. 
this far to leave you. I didn't have you go through the fire to burn you. I didn't have you go through the water to drown you. I am with you, and I will never leave you. You need to hear that today. I am faithful, and I am walking with you. Even though you're in the darkest of night and you feel there's no hope, I am with you. I am your Lord, your Savior, your leader, and your guide, and I will never leave you nor forsake you. Thank you, Lord. All my life, He has been faithful. All my life, You have been so, so good. Every breath that I I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me, and all my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up till I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness. times you've led me through the fire, oh God. Some through the water, some through the flood, some through the fire, but all through the blood. Amen. I love your voice. You've led me through the fire, and in darkest night, you are close.
the whole world in his hands got the whole world in his hands got the whole world in his hands got the whole world you know how we like to do it i want you to point at somebody real nice and say it like this he's got you and me sister in his hands he's got you and me brother in his hands he's got Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the Lord's house. Thank the Lord. He's got Catalpa Street in his hand. <laughs> he's got, name your street. He's got, <laughs> he's got your street in his hand. He's got Lichman Avenue in his hand. He's got the whole world in his hands. Aren't you glad for that? He's got Washington, D.C. in his hand. <laughs> Believe it or not, <laughs> even when we don't see it, <laughs> we know he's working. That's all right. Uh, just a few announcements. It's good to be back in the house of the Lord this, this morning. Eh? So uh, we're, we're praising God. We're believing God for an end to COVID-19. Praise the Lord. We just, Father, in the name of Jesus. We got folks we know, friends we know that have dealt with this. Got loved ones who have passed away. Father, we, we know, Father, it's in your hand. You're going to accomplish what you want to accomplish. You're going to, you're going to show us what you want to show us. You're going to teach us what you want to teach us, Lord. We're open. Teach us, Lord. We're, we're open. We want to hear from you. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we pray for all those who have been afflicted with, uh, with this disease. We believe that uh, I know they got vaccines and everything. They'll come up with their they'll come up with it with their solutions. But God is the solution. Jesus Christ is the solution. People need to turn to Jesus. I'm going. God make sure he's he's going to make sure that he lets all of us know wh who we really need. When nothing else works, that vaccine might work 95 percent. Jesus worked 100 percent all the time. All right. Anyway, thank you all for being here uh, today, and uh, for those who are watching. Uh, by, uh, by uh, computer. Uh, hello. Good to, good to, I'm glad that you're here and uh, glad we can come together. Um, before, in just a minute, I'm going to have our brother Joe come and, uh, and lead us in a word of prayer. Uh, tonight, I'll be here and uh, speaking. And we also will have our Bible study Wednesday. Everything is back on track. Uh, so uh, Wednesday evening, we'll be talking about the dispensation of the law. That we've been that was what we were doing before we had a little interruption. It's good to be good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Good to see God's people. Okay. Everybody's healthy. Give the Lord a hand clap. All right. Brother Joe, would you come and lead us in a prayer? Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You know, I think of 2020, we're out of 2020. I think we need to shake off all the doom and gloom, huh? Shake it off. It's like, just like Paul shook off that serpent and that fire in Acts 28. We thank you, Lord. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. We, got, we got 21. <laughs> Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for a bright and perfect future, Lord, that you have for each and every one of us. Father, we lift up this service this morning. We thank you, Lord, for the folks that are watching online. Father, we ask you to touch each heart that's watching, Lord. Meet every need, uh, healing, Lord, uh, deliverance, or whatever is needed, Father. We thank you, Lord, that your Holy Spirit just flow in this place, flow in this valley, 
flow in this earth like never before. A fresh wind from heaven. We thank you for it, Father. A fresh fire. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Rivers of living water flowing. We thank you and bless you for it, Father. In a precious and holy name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for the word that's uh, being prepared. We prepare our hearts right now for your word. We receive it. Holy Spirit, you are our leader. You are our guide. You are our teacher. Teach us this morning. We thank you and bless you for it. In Jesus' name, have your way. Manifest yourself any way you see fit. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the Lord's house. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Yeah, you're good. You're good. Okay. Praise the Lord. It's good to be in here. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm glad I'm saved this morning. Aren't you? Can you just imagine going through what we're going through right now in this world without knowing Jesus Christ? What would, what would, what would, we know the answer. We, we, you know, we know the answer is Jesus. We don't know what's going to happen this year. As Joe said, it's a new year. Uh, we're believing God for great things. We believe in God for uh, the Lord. Send your power. Send a revival. <laughs> send a revival amongst our young people. You know, us old folks, we're, we're getting on here. We can't quite do the things we used to do when we were 20 and 30 years old. Some of us maybe can, but, <laughs> but uh, anyway, thank you for your continued prayers for me. Uh, I'm, I've been, uh, I finished uh, my outpatient therapy and and I'm going to start going down the Y and using the <laughs> trying to get some strength back. But thank you. I can, I'm still hobbling around a little bit. That's right. We'll take care of that. Um, God is good. My, my, my knees don't hurt anymore. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I'm going to be reading this morning. We have prepared the Lord's table, and uh, we will be having communion at the end of our service. I... Uh, I'm going to be reading from Matthew chapter 5. I started last, last Sunday. We were talking about the, uh, we read through the Beatitudes, and we said how the things that the world tells us we need to be happy are exactly opposite of what Jesus tells us we need to be happy. And I'm thankful for worldly, uh, worldly comforts, and you know we have houses and cars, and that's good. We're thankful for that. But the truly blessed, the truly blessed, the truly happy are the poor in spirit, they that mourn, the meek, those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, the merciful. Just the opposite of what, what they tell you in the movies. But uh, I was, I was going to pick up with verse um, 17, but I'm going to back up a little bit because I just, I just feel the presence of the Lord in... in uh, In verse 13 of chapter 5, we kind of we kind of ended up with this one. And I, you all weren't here last, because <laughs> we were here, we were watching. But he says, you are the salt of the earth. You're the salt of the earth. What, what, what a message from, from the greatest to the least from the richest to the poorest, in all races, all nations, if Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you are the salt of the earth. You could say, I am the salt of the earth. We have a purpose for being here. Amen. Salvation isn't just like a ticket to, to, have, a ticket to heaven or a get-out-of-hell-free card, you know. In fact, I, I initially, and the message I'm still going to bring is how not to be saved. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to. That's where we're going to go. But only through the blood of Jesus Christ, not through the works that we do, not through our attitudes. Listen, he says, if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith will it be salted? Sometimes I feel that as the older we get. And the longer I've been in this thing called Christianity, I find myself sometimes losing my savor. You, you all know what I mean? Remember when you were young, you just, got to, you just uh, heard the word and you got saved. And you're telling everybody about Jesus and you're just being, you know. And the years roll on and you get into a vocation like being a pastor or something. 
and, it's, and it becomes a job. Y'all know, y'all know what I'm talking about. Lord, don't help us not lose our savor. Lord, help us not lose. I want to be the salt of the earth. He goes on. He says, "You are the light of the world. The light of the world. Well, I I can't shine my light. I don't have satellites to go into all the world. Now, wherever we are, the body of Christ, we are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid." But we find ourselves sometimes as we go on, as we get older, and as we get into the, into the church routine, and uh, dare I use the word rut, <laughs> we get into the rut of church, and we go to church, it's Sunday, it's time to go to church, and we forget the reason why we come together. You know, we come here together to be empowered by the Spirit and hear God's Word and be encouraged and so that we could go out and be salt and light. We don't need salt and light in here. We need, they need salt and light out there. And so that's, that's the whole thing. And, and we are the light of the world as a believer, whether, you're, whether you have a, a ministry with 10,000 people in it or whether you're just, you're just, a, a, uh, you know, just, a, just a person sitting in a pew. We, we are the light of the world. He goes on. And he says this, and this is where I want to go. Uh, verse 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of leave us with that. But I want to start with verse 17. Jesus says this. This is, this is his, one of his earliest discourses, this Sermon on the Mount, chapters 5, 6, and 7. This is one of his earliest like, speeches to the, to the multitude. And a lot of people think, well, and I know when I first got saved, I, I told you, I, I, I started in Matthew, and I started reading through Matthew. And when I came to this part, I like, shook my head and said, I got to do this? I got this? Listen to what he says. He says, think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. Well, a lot of people today, there are like kind of two extremes that exist in Christendom when it comes to the law. The one extreme is you got to observe the Sabbath. You can't eat pork. You can't eat. One, one extreme is like we have to follow the law. If I want to get to heaven, I have to follow, I have to follow that law. And we know that it's impossible to follow the whole. There are 600 and some commandments that we can't follow. Uh, and then the other extreme is like, hey, I'm under the blood. It's a new, uh, a new covenant, uh, so I don't have to worry about what the Old Testament says. I can just, okay, so there's all these extremes. But Jesus said, listen, I have not come to destroy the law. I didn't come to, like, make it null and void, but I came to fulfill it. Aren't you thankful that Jesus came to do what we couldn't do? He came to fulfill. He didn't come to fulfill it just so he could say, I've, I've done it. He had to fulfill it. He, he is the law. He came to fulfill it because I couldn't. The whole thing, in this first, the, the first discourse, he's laying down, he's like laying down the law. And he's, he's letting everybody know that you can't make yourself righteous by the law. You know, the Apostle Paul brought that out in his writings and his teachings. But Jesus is laying this down. He says, I didn't come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill he says, for verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle, that means like one dot of the I or one cross of the T, shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. You're not, there's, no, there's not a loophole. You're not getting out of anything. If you're going to expect to be judged by the law, it's going to be every one of them. And we learn later on, we can read, that it says, if you break one of them, you break the whole thing. It's not like... So Jesus is saying, listen, it's, you, don't you think that the law is like undone because the law is God. God is, that's his standards. The, 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 the Torah that we read in the first five books of the Bible, those, ex, those express God's standards. His standards are high. Or they're, they're God. He says, in verse 19, Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. 
but whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Well, here's the thing. That even the least of them, if, if you really read all those laws and commandments in the Torah, there's just like, they tell you what kind of clothes, you can't wear like linen and cotton at the same time. There's all these laws they had, you know. If, if, if that was the case, I'd have been done a long time ago because it said, if you disrespect your parents, you were supposed to be stoned. I'd have been gone a whole long time ago. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I, w- I wouldn't have made it, I, w- I wouldn't have made it to my driver's test, okay? He says, for I say unto you, and, and this, this is, when you think about this next statement, it's, it's, it's just like mind-blowing. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now, Jesus is preaching this to the multitude of Jews there in, you know. So they're com- the common people, you and me, we, they were there. And to them, the Pharisees, that word Pharisee means separated one. The Pharisees were like the holy ones. They, if, if you would go to any, any common person and say, who are like the holiest people here? They would point to the guy with a pointy hat, the Pharisee, and they would say, this guy, man, he can't, I, he won't even walk on the same side of the street as me unless he brush up against me. He's so holy, he can't, you know, he's, he has to wash his hands every time he picks up a fork. Man, he's just, I mean, he, these guys are holy. And, and Paul said that he was a Pharisee. According to the law of, uh, touching righteousness, he was without blame. And they had all these, all these uh, things that they had to do that really had nothing to do with the law at all. The Pharisees made stuff up. Uh, they, they made even harder things. And so when, when, when Jesus would tell these people, you've got to be more righteous than the Pharisees, they must, their jaw must have dropped. They said, I mean, these guys have been to, they studied under, under rabbis, and they went to Pharisee school and, and the scribes, and they spend all their time reading and copying Scripture, and we've got to be better than them? I mean, he's laying this down. To us, that doesn't like, mean a whole lot, but, but to these people at that time? We've got to be better than them. You know, it's pretty easy to, nowadays. We all know we have faults. So somebody could say, well, you've got to be better than Pastor Carmen. That wouldn't, be, that wouldn't take too much <laughs> to do that. You know, you've got to be better than this, the overseer of the church or whatever. You know, again, that would be, we're all human, right? But the Pharisees were like, Phew. it's like in the Catholic Church, they'd have to tell you you have to be better than the Pope. It would be like, Listen to what he says. Jesus, he's, he's laying, Jesus is laying down the law. He's saying this. You have heard that it was said by them of old time that you shall not kill. And whosoever shall kill shall be danger of, in danger of the judgment. Okay? Got that? But I say unto you, now this is Jesus talking, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. Does that touch anybody's? Does that touch a nerve in here somewhere? I've got a few nerves to get. <laughs> and whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, which means you fool, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, thou fool, which is like a stronger, shall be in danger of hellfire. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar... Oh, we're going we're to come to the altar this morning and partake of the Lord's table. He says, if you bring your gift to the altar and there remembers that you have odd against your, uh, odd against, or your brother has odd against you, leave there your gift. Keep your gift. See, our gifts are only as good as our spirit, as the spirit that brings them. Our tithes, our offerings, our we're only as good as the spirit of God within us is, is our we. Jesus, he's saying, listen, you know, and people, they would bring gifts to the altar and it would make a big deal. You know, oh, I'm going to bring this gift. Jesus says, get things right. Get things right. Now, listen, that, and we can go on a big, long thing about forgiveness and acceptance, all that stuff. You know, sometimes... 
you can get things right. I mean, I, I've said this before. If somebody's done me wrong, I want to make it right with them. That doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to go on vacation with them, <laughs> okay? <laughs> you know, I mean, so, I, I mean, yeah, you understand what I mean. But it's like getting, letting go of grudge, giving, giving it to the Lord. You just give it to the Lord. There's some things when I think about, I just got to take it. I just got to say, Lord, I'm giving it to you because I can't deal with it myself. <laughs> Come on, let's all, we're all human beings. Jesus says, you got to deal with it. Give it to the Lord, okay? He's saying, he's saying leave your gift there uh, before the altar and go your way. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Okay, reconciled. Again, that's, 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 a, that's a big word. Okay, it covers a lot of ground. He says, agree with thine adversary quickly. See, see, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you might as well just quit listening. You might as well just stop your ears right now. Because you can't, you can't, you're not able to do this stuff unless you got the Spirit of God living inside you. And that's what Jesus is trying to show him through this whole thing. Is we need a Savior. He's telling us stuff that we can't do on our own. He says, Leave there thy gift before the altar. Verse 25. Agree with your adversary quickly while you are in the way with him. Lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. Verily I say unto you, you shall by no means come out hence till you have paid the uttermost farthing. We know the story that Jesus told about the fella who borrowed like a large amount of money from a guy, and the guy wouldn't have paid back. And the, and the guy didn't have the money, so the guy had mercy on him. He said, well, okay, he just forgave the debt. And the guy went out and found somebody that owed him 20 bucks and said, pay me. I'm going to throw you in the prison. And we, we all know that story. We all know what happened, that parable that Jesus told. He said, listen, if you want forgiven, forgive. It's, you know, you forgive. Okay. okay. Verse 27, listen to this. Oh, this is, this is a good one. You have heard it, it was said by them of old time, you shall not commit adultery. Okay? It's one of the Ten Commandments, one of the first ten, right? But I say unto you, that whosoever looks on a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her already in his heart. This must be for the men. <laughs> 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 you know, now, now, men, <laughs> we all, you know, how, how men are, are, are visual. <laughs> you know how that is? <laughs> See, I could, I, I could say, well, I, I've never, I never committed adultery. I never cheated on my wife. But Jesus said. <laughs> <laughs> and, but Jesus says, well, have, have your eyes ever strayed? And I perhaps said, well, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Whoever looks on a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her already in his heart. That means, you know, pornography. That means, you know, I, and this might apply to a few ladies too. Listen. If your right eye offend you, pluck it out. Now, he's not telling us to actually get a thing to pluck our eye, but he's, he's, trying, to ex he's, trying, to, he, he's trying to explain to us. There's some, sometimes there's some things that we hold on to that we've got to let go. If your right eye offend you, pluck it out and cast it from you. For it's profitable for you that one of your members should perish and not that the whole body should be cast into hell. See, see what, how important is our salvation? He's laying this down. He's laying the law down right now. And basically telling us, listen, you, you want to be saved by doing law. You think that law is going to save you? That law is going to heal you? Well, here, right here, I'm telling you, now you got to do this. And if your right hand offend you, cut it off. And cast it from thee, for it's profitable that you, one of your members should perish, but no, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. I mean, Jesus is saying, listen, it's important. 
This salvation thing is important. This, this living life is important. Because there are things, when we're born, we're, we're born with a sin nature, and there are things that we can't conquer on our own. Twelve steps won't work. The, the, the psychiatry, psychology books I've read and you can read, they, no, psychology won't work. Uh, psychotherapy, they, all this stuff, it's man's attempt at trying to fix what's wrong. But what's wrong is sin. And the only thing that will fix that is Jesus. He's laying this down to his people. And he's saying, listen, if you think you're, the law is going to get you into heaven, well, here, try it. He's only, he's only mentioned a couple of them. Listen, he goes on. He says this. It has been said, whosoever shall put away his wife, <laughs> let him give her a writing of divorcement. But I say unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causes her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced commits adultery. Jesus. We have a whole nation full of people in a whole lot of trouble. Okay. <laughs> Again, you have heard it said by them of old, you shall not forswear thyself, but shall perform unto the Lord thine oaths. But I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, neither by earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the king. Because they would do, you know, they would take these oaths and, you know, by the city of Jerusalem and by the gold of the altar and all this other stuff. And the thing is, people were, were swearing uh, on things that weren't theirs. You know, I could say, well, I'm going to swear on my house. You know, that's my house. I could lose it. But people were swearing on the stuff of God. He said, neither shall thou swear by thy head, because thou cannot make one hair white or black. But let your commandment, no, your, your, your communication, just be yes or no. Is yes or no enough? If somebody asks me a question and I say yes or no, shouldn't that be? Shouldn't that be enough? Yea or Yea, yea, nay, nay, for whatsoever is more than these comes of evil. Live your life in the way that your yes means yes and your no means no, and everybody knows it. Maybe. <laughs> Some say uh, <laughs> no means yes and yes means maybe. I, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> All right. There used to be a song like that. I can't remember. <laughs> Verse 38, Jesus, he's challenging them because all these things he's dealing with are things that they, they you know, they, the, the Ten Commandments and so forth. Listen, you have heard it has been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Did you ever pull that one out on someone? <laughs> I've, I've, I've had to happen. I've, I, knew, I, I knew a guy in the mill. We were talking one time. And somebody, he, somebody had done something to him. So he said, well, he says, eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth. I'm going for it. <laughs> what people don't understand, when that was given in the, in the Old Testament, it, it was given as like a limit of what you, could, what you could demand. If somebody did you wrong, you know, if somebody did like something small and you wanted to sue them for a million bucks, said the, 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 it was basically like the punishment fitting the crime, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. If you read that back in... I believe Leviticus. Okay. Exodus. But I say unto you, that you resist not evil. Now, this is, listen, this is getting deep now. This is getting real deep. I say unto you that you resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn him to the other. You better have the Holy Spirit to do that. <laughs> Don't you slap my right cheek. <laughs> Jesus is making, man, he's making this hard. He's making this salvation thing hard. I can't do that. Somebody throws a punch at me, the first thing I want to do is duck and go back at him. <laughs> Resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. Oh, Jesus, you're making this hard, man. I remember the first time I read this, I said, wait a minute. 
And if any man will sue thee at the law and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. If they're suing you for a hundred bucks, give them two. <laughs> and Judge Judy can never handle that. I don't know. <laughs> and whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him two miles. Give to him that asks thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. God, Jesus, give us, give us mercy, Lord. You have heard that it is said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. <laughs> oh, God says, we're going to need all the grace in the world here. I need, I need some grace, oh, God. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Anybody here got an enemy? He's not, now, listen, he's not talking about the devil, okay? We're not supposed to love the devil. He's our enemy. He's our adversary. Now, he's talking about people. I hope I'm nobody's enemy. I don't want to be anybody's enemy. But I think I might have a couple floating around. <laughs> you have heard it said that you shall love thy neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say unto you, Jesus, he's saying this, love your enemies, bless them that curse you. Jesus, stop. Do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, I can't. I'm... I'm just, you're wearing me out here. I got. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, Lord, give me mercy. <laughs> if I got to do that to get into heaven, <laughs> oh, God. He said, Do this, listen, that you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he makes his son to rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love them which love you, what reward have you? Do not even the publicans the same. Tax collectors, they do, they do that. And if you salute your brethren only, what do you more than others? Publicans do so. But be there for perfect or complete, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Perfect. All these things he's saying. All these things he's saying. I, I read, you know, the first time I read this, I, I got a new Christian. I'm reading this. I'm saying, Jesus, I can't do that. You know, and back then I had more enemies than I had now, I think. <laughs> I've, I've, I've said it. I've kind of adopted this as a, as, a, as a saying. Agape love, true love, is when you'll do stuff you don't want to do for people that don't like you. And only the Holy Spirit only the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. I can't, I don't have it within me to turn the other cheek. I don't have it within me to love my enemies. I don't have it within me to pray for those people that are doing me wrong, despitefully using me. I, you know, I might, I might pray they get hit with a brick or something. I'm, I'm not praying for, I'm not praying for their well-being. I said, Lord, help me. I need, I need God dwelling inside of me to, to accomplish this. And he goes on further and we're, we're just going to close there in, in chapter 6 next week. He talks about praying and giving and fasting and doing all those things. Oh. So basically, the bottom line is this. Religious activity will not save you. Good deeds done out of a, done out, done out of a, out of a bad agenda will not save you. When he says love your enemies, he's not talking about faking loving your enemies. I can do that. I've done that a few times. Oh, it's nice to see you again. <laughs> On the inside. <laughs> it's a genuinely loving an enemy, somebody who has done you wrong. That's hard. I can't. I, God, if, if, if God, if you don't help me do it, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. If you think you're going to get saved, by following the law, Jesus says, Jesus saying, well, let's just see just how deep the law goes. It goes beyond what I can do. But thank God he can do it. I thank God that he said, I'll put my spirit inside of you. It talked here about being children of your father. 
Paul said in Romans. He said, we have not received the spirit of fear, but the spirit of adoption, whereby we can cry, Abba, Father. We're, by faith, we're adopted children of God. And because we are, God can place in us the spirit that we need to be able to do what Jesus says. Because Jesus did all this stuff. He demonstrated everything he's talking about right here. He demonstrated it. He, when he said, Father, forgive them, they don't know what they're doing, he meant it. He did all these things. And if he did them, he can help me do them. I'm not going to do it on my own. And sometimes I look for a loophole. <laughs> you know? So I'm like, Jesus, do you really want me to? Really? Jesus? <laughs> Jesus. I thank God that, you know, we can come to church and admit we're not perfect. We can sit here, and all I'm reading here is not to, like, condemn anybody or make anybody. It's, it's to, like, let us know that we are desperately in need of a Savior. Amen. We can't fulfill these things. No human being on this earth, I don't care how holy they are, how righteous they are, we, we can try the best we can, but to do this from the heart, from the inside, I need Jesus Christ inside of me. And you do, too. And anybody else that might be watching that ugly little camera up here, it's, it's the same thing goes. You need Christ inside of you. You need Christ inside of you to be able to overcome that bondage you're in. To be able to overcome that thing you've been wrestling with all your life. Listen, Christ inside of you can bring you victory. Complete victory. We don't have to stand up and say, hey, my name is so-and-so and I'm an alcoholic. You can stand up and say, my, my name is so-and-so, I'm a born-again child of God, and I ain't an alcoholic no more. I'm not a foreign, I was, born, I, was, I was a born fornicator. I'm not a fornicator. I'm not, I'm not that anymore. I was a born liar. I'm not a liar anymore because I've been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And when I find myself drifting back, the Holy Spirit will come along and put his hand on my shoulder and say, hey, <laughs> come on. Even when, I'm a, even when I can't see it, he's working. I thank God. I thank God for his mercy and his grace and his goodness. I thank God that, Father, you've, take, you've taken us as sinners, and you've taken us as we are, and you do the work in our life. It's a lifelong, it's a lifelong journey, a lifelong learning of what's right and what's wrong. And there's sometimes, Father, that we don't measure up to this. That's okay, because Jesus will come, and the Holy Spirit will come, and he'll lay his hand on our shoulder, and he'll be in to speak to us, and he'll change us on the inside. He'll change our hearts. He'll do the work that no, that we could never do on our own. I'm so glad that I, I can have a confidence to know that I can go boldly to the throne of grace. When I feel hatred in my heart, I can go to Jesus and say, Jesus, I feel this and ain't right. When I feel lust in my heart, I can go to Jesus and say, Jesus, this isn't right. And he'll accept me and he'll give me a spirit and he'll heal me and he'll cleanse me and he'll make me be the person he wants me to be. And the same is true for every one of us. Whether you've been saved for 50 years or 50 minutes, you're a child of God through faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. Nobody can take that from you. You don't need anything else. You got the word. I had a pastor, Spencer, my pastor. He says, yeah, I, would, I would say, well, pastor, I think I might go talk to a counselor. He says, you don't need no counselor. <laughs> and pastor Spencer. And Louise, he remembered Pastor Spencer. You don't need a counselor. All we need is Jesus Christ. All we need is Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for your word. We, we prepared the Lord's table this morning. And uh, it's the new covenant. It's the new covenant. When Jesus sat down with his disciples and they, they partook of the Lord's table, he said, this is a new covenant written in my blood that is shed for you. The old covenant had blood of goats and bulls and turtle doves. And, but this new covenant had this blood of the one, the one Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. That's the only one we need. We don't have to make those offerings all the time. Jesus did it once and for all. And we partake of the Lord's table.
I would ask you before we do to search yourself this, this morning and, and I'll search myself, believe me. I'm sure that every one of us in here has something we can lay at the altar. It might be, it might, it might be a bondage, it might be a resentment, whatever it might be. It's between you and God. You know, I grew up in a church where I had to go tell a guy behind the screen what I did. We don't have to do that. We can go to God. We have a mediator, our high priest, Jesus Christ. He said we can go boldly to the throne of grace to seek help in time of need. We need help, Lord. We, we need help. As individuals, we need help. As a nation, we need help. As a world, we need help. Help us shine our lights. Help us be the salt of the earth by living what you're talking about right here. And we can only do it through the presence and the work and the power of the Holy Spirit. Father, before we partake of the Lord's table, I just want to pray for everyone in this room and all who might be watching. Lord, help that, that fellowship that we have with you by the presence of the Holy Spirit. God, let there be a cleansing. We sang that song, even now you're mending hearts. You're, you're, you're restoring, you're restoring relationships. You're bringing peace. You're giving us hope. Father, these, Jesus didn't say all this stuff to lay a guilt trip on people. He said all this stuff to let us know that we're desperately in need of a Savior. The Lamb of God the spotless Lamb of God that takes away sin. Father, that, that's, that's a promise to all who come to him. Father, and for those of us sitting in this room right now, Father, there are those of us who we might be thinking, boy, this, i got a thing going on inside of me. Lord, we, we want to bring it, we want to set it on the altar right now in the name of Jesus and believe that by the blood of Jesus Christ, we are made whole. We are made whole. I'm going to ask my wife Rose to come, and she's going to come in and serve. Uh, Greg, could you come and just play softly? Yeah, play some, play some more. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We are here.
darkness, my God, that is who you are. Yes, Lord. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Thank you, Lord. Has everybody received communion that wants to receive communion today? Are we all good? Ed, I just can't, could you? Ed, that one there. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Greg, could you play, play a G chord? Play a G chord. Because of who you are, I give you glory. of who you are I give you praise because of who you are I will lift my voice and say Lord I worship you because of who you are I will worship you because of who Thank you, Lord. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took a piece of bread, a piece of unleavened bread that was part of the Passover celebration. And he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. We always like to look at this picture that Jesus gave us of himself. We see there are stripes because by his stripes we are healed. And there are bruises on they call that bruising on there that little burnt mark it's because he was bruised for our iniquities Jesus and we see the holes in it because he was pierced when they nailed him to the cross and stuck the, the spear in his side and the most important thing see and this is why this is why we have a hope if, if we didn't have this hope then we would all be doomed to hell but here's why we have a hope there was no sin in him he was the sinless, spotless Lamb of God, the only true offering without blemish or without spot that was offered once for all for the sins of you and me and the whole creation. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. See, this is why I can read this stuff that we were reading, all this stuff, and say, oh, that's so hard to do. It's imp not hard, it's impossible to do. But because the spotless Lamb of God gave his body to be broken and beaten for us and nailed to a cross, because of that, we have hope of going into heaven. Even though we were born with a sin nature, it's been conquered through the blood of Jesus Christ. He didn't come to destroy the law. He came to fulfill it for me because I couldn't fulfill it. He came to do that for me and for you and for all who will believe. Jesus said, this is my body which is broken for you. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. It's partake of the body. And on the night he was betrayed, he took the cup. He said, this is the cup of a new covenant. I'm so glad we have a new covenant. I couldn't do the old one. I, I couldn't, we, we couldn't, they couldn't keep it. They couldn't keep it for 40 days. Peter said, if it didn't save us, why did we think it's, it's going to save them? Jesus gave us a new covenant. It's a better covenant. It took the place of the old one. It didn't destroy the old one. The old one still exists. But but this is the new one that took its place. And this covenant was a covenant written in his blood so that anybody like me, like you, any sinner like me could come and say, Jesus, I'm trusting in the blood, your blood to cleanse me from sin. And we can have assurance that through faith in his blood, God accepts us as an as a adopted son or daughter through faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. Even though I can't measure up, Jesus measures up. He said, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake of the cup. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
We're so thankful, Father, for your offering of your son. We're thankful, Father, that we have a testimony, that we have a testimony of what you've done to us and for us. I can't give a testimony and say, hey, I've, I'm perfect. I've, I've, I'm completely sinless now. <laughs> I wish I could give that testimony, but here's a testimony I can give. By the blood of Jesus, I've been accepted by the Father. And he's working on me. And someday, you know what? I'm going to be perfect. Someday I'm going to be complete. Someday I'm going to put on a resurrected body. And I'll never, listen, when, when, we go, when we go into eternity, the one thing, I'll be glad that it's not there. Sin won't be there. Sin and sickness and death won't be there. We'll only be in a, in a relationship with our Father. Amen. That song sounds like this. We know it. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a child of God in my mother's womb. You have chosen me. Love has called my name. I've been born again into a family. His blood flows through my veins. I'm no longer a slave to fear. child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child. He split the sea. He split the sea so I could walk right through my fears are drowned in perfect love. You rescued me and I will stand and sing. I am a child of God. If you're a child of God, sing that one more time. You split the sea. He split the sea so I could walk right through it. My fears are drowned in perfect love. You rescued me so I could stand and sing. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. Are you a child of God this morning? If you are, give the Lord a hand clap of praise and worship. And thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, that by the blood of Jesus Christ, we can lay claim to being part of the family of God. We could lay claim to being covered by the blood of Jesus Christ and be, be while you, we're not practically sinless, you see us as sinless and covered by the blood. You see us as perfect in your sight only through what Jesus did for us. We're thankful, Father, for needy people. And Father, you have met every need. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious unto you. Lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. God bless you all. Have a great, have a great afternoon. See you again. God bless.